Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Open up resources. Illustrative Mathematics Unit 3, Lesson 5. Introduction to Linear Relationships. Glossary Terms. Linear Relationship. A linear relationship between two quantities means they are related like this. When one quantity changes by a certain amount, the other quantity always changes by a set amount. In a linear relationship, one quantity has a constant rate of change with respect to the other. The relationship is called linear because its graph is a line. The graph shows a relationship between a number of days and a number of pages read. When the number of days increases by 2, the number of pages read always increases by 60. The rate of change is constant, 30 pages per day, so the relationship is linear. Rate of change. The rate of change in a linear relationship is the amount y changes when x increases by 1. The rate of change in a linear relationship is also the slope of its graph. In this graph, y increases by $15 when x increases by 1 hour. The rate of change is $15 per hour. Let's look at the slope of this line. Let's start at the point in the lower left hand corner and move to the point in the upper right hand corner. You have to move to the right 4 units and then move up 60 units. 60 over 4, that's the slope, or 60 divided by 4, which is 15, so the slope of this line is 15. Slope. The slope of a line is a number we can calculate using any two points on the line. To find the slope, divide the vertical distance between the points by the horizontal distance. The slope of this line is 2 divided by 3, or 2 thirds. The slope of a line is rise over run, and in this case the rise is 2 units and the run is 3 units. The slope of this line is 2 thirds. Problem number 1. A restaurant offers delivery for their pizzas. The total cost is a delivery fee added to the price of the pizza. One customer pays $25 to have two pizzas delivered. Another customer pays $58 for five pizzas. How many pizzas are delivered to a customer who pays $80? Some of the key information is $25 for two pizzas, $58 for five pizzas, and a question mark or an unknown amount of pizzas for $80. But they don't tell us the cost for delivery. The cost for delivery is unknown. Two pizzas plus the delivery fee equals $25. Five pizzas plus the delivery fee equals $58. Two pizzas plus delivery equals $25 or 2P plus D equals 25. And 5P plus D equals 58. Since the delivery fee is unknown, we need to get the D by itself. I can rewrite these equations as D equals 25 minus 2P and D equals 58 minus 5P. I want to just test this out and plug some values in for P. Imagine the price of each pizza is $10. So if the price of each pizza was $10, two pizzas would be $20, and five pizzas would be $50. So 25 minus 20 equals five, and 58 minus 50 equals eight. One delivery fee came out to $5, the other delivery fee came out to $8. So we know that the price of the pizza is not $10 because the delivery fee is the same every single time. So let's try $11 for the pizza. 2 pizzas times 11 is 22, and 5 pizzas times 11 is 55. So 25 minus 22 is 3, and 58 minus 55 is also 3. So we've figured it out. The delivery fee is $3, and the price of a single pizza is $11. Now we can use this information to figure out how many pizzas are delivered to a customer who pays $80. So $80 minus $3 for delivery equals $77 for pizza. And 77 divided by 11 is 7. So $80 paid for 7 pizzas to be delivered. Problem number 2. To paint a house, a painting company charges a flat rate of $500 for supplies, plus $50 for each hour of labor. A. 
How much would the painting company charge to paint a house that needs 20 hours of labor? A house that needs 50 hours of labor. 20 hours labor times $50 plus $500 for supplies. 20 times 50 is 1,000 plus $500 is 1,500 or $1,500. 50 hours labor times $50 plus 500 for supplies. 50 times 50 is 2,500 plus 500 is 3,000. Here's a closer look at where those two points fall on the grid. 20 units to the right along the horizontal axis and 1,500 units up along the vertical axis for the first point and 50 units to the right along the horizontal axis and 3,000 units up along the vertical axis. B. Draw a line that represents the relationship between X, the number of hours it takes the painting company to finish the house, and Y, the total cost of painting the house. Label the two points from the earlier question on your graph. We'll draw a line straight through these two points. Notice that the line meets the vertical axis at $500. That $500 is the flat rate for supplies. The first point's coordinates are 20 and 1500, and the second point's coordinates are 50 and 3000. C. Find the slope of the line. What is the meaning of the slope in this context? The slope is rise over run. The distance traveled horizontally from 20 to 50 is 30, so the run is 30, and the distance traveled between 1500 and 3000 is 1500, so the rise is 1500. The slope is 1500 over 30, or 1500 divided by 30, and 1500 divided by 30 is 50, so the slope is 50. The meaning of the slope in this context is the amount of money that the company charges for labor per hour. Problem number three from eighth grade, unit three, lesson four. Tyler and Elena are on the cross country team. Tyler's distance and times for a training run are shown on the graph. Elena's distance and times for a training run are given by the equation y equals eight and five tenths times x where X represents distance in miles and Y represents time in minutes. A. Who ran farther in 10 minutes? How much farther? Explain how you know. The graph shows that Tyler runs one mile in eight and one third minutes, which is equal to eight minutes and 20 seconds. In order to find out how far they ran in 10 miles, we need to find out how far they ran in one mile and then multiply that by 10. Eight and one third minutes is equivalent to 25 thirds of a minute. So he can run one mile in 25 thirds of a minute. We're going to use this information to see how far he runs in just one minute. 25 thirds times its reciprocal, three twenty-fifths equals one. Since we multiplied the minutes by 3 25ths, we need to multiply the miles by 3 25ths. And one mile times 3 25ths equals 3 25ths. So he can run 3 25ths of a mile in one minute. We need to know how far he runs in 10 minutes. So one minute times 10 equals 10 minutes, and 3 25ths times 10 equals 30 25ths. And 30 25ths equals 1 and 5 25ths, or 1 and 1 5th miles. In 10 minutes, Tyler can run 1 and 1 5th miles. The equation that represents Elena's distance tells us that Elena runs 1 mile in 8 and 5 10 minutes, which is the same as 8 and a half minutes. But I can use 8 and 5 10 Again, we need to figure out how far she runs in 1 minute. 8 and 5 tenths is the same as 85 tenths. Multiply 85 tenths by its reciprocal, 10 85ths, to get 1. And since we multiplied the minutes by 10 85ths, we need to multiply the distance by 10 85ths. And 1 mile times 10 85ths equals 10 85ths miles. 
So that's one minute. We need to multiply that by 10 to make it 10 minutes. And 10 85ths miles times 10 equals 185 miles. So how far is 185 miles? 85 goes into 100 once with 15 left over. So it's 1 and 15 85 miles. Which is approximately 1 and 18 hundredths miles. In 10 minutes, Tyler can run 1.2 miles. And in 10 minutes, Elena can run 1.18 miles. Tyler ran farther and he ran 2 hundredths miles farther. B. Calculate each runner's pace in minutes per mile. We did so much work in A that we already have that answer. Tyler runs one mile in eight and one third minutes, or eight minutes, 20 seconds. And Elena runs one mile in eight and five tenths minutes, or eight and a half minutes, or eight minutes, 30 seconds. C. Who ran faster during the training run? Explain or show your reasoning. Tyler ran faster because he finished sooner. Problem number four from eighth grade unit two, lesson 12. Write an equation for the line that passes through coordinates two and five and six and seven. I could make a chart to figure this out with the X coordinate on the left and the Y coordinate on the right. Let's put the two and the five and the six and the seven. Since half of two is one and one plus four equals five, and half of 6 is 3, and 3 plus 4 equals 7, we can say that the y value equals half the x value plus 4. So an equation that could represent these coordinates can be y equals 1 half x plus 4. Another equation would be y minus 5 over x minus 2 equals 1 half. Help me help you by disrupting YouTube's algorithm. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.